What's going on, guys? This is Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ back in for another great episode. And today, obsessed, so we are breaking down my league mates team. Desmond, hold up. First of all, there's no friends in fantasy football, so I didn't mean to say my friend, but he is my boy back home. He had the virtual team that we were drafting on draft day, and we're going to break it down today to see how he did. So let's get right into the episode. So we are breaking down Desmond's team. As you can see, I got it up on the screen. This is what we're doing today. This is part of my $5 opportunity that you guys can have yourself where I grade your roster. Playoff expectations, how you did in the draft, you know, are you a contender? Does your team suck, et cetera. We're going to handle that today with Desmond. So today we're looking at his team. Right now I'm looking at his quarterbacks. Right now he has Teddy Bridgewater. I know a lot of people had something to say on draft day because you drafted too high to go get him. You could have waited a little bit later to go get him, but you did reach. But overall, Teddy Bridgewater is going to give you 20 to 25 points a week, so I'm not mad at it. He got DJ Moore. He got Robbie Anderson. He also has Curtis Samuel, and he has CMC on his side, so how can he lose? He's set up for success. So if your expectation for Teddy Bridgewater is 20 to 25 points, then that's fine. You know what I mean? I'm not mad at your QB situation. Now, of course, you're a Chargers fan. Let's jump all the way down to your bench, Tyrod Taylor. He's there. But me, I'm not a big fan of Tyrod Taylor because the longevity isn't there. Thank God you didn't go draft him. I think you got him off waivers last week. But again, expectations for Tyrod Taylor isn't a full season. You got Justin Herbert there waiting in the shadows, waiting to take his job. So I do feel like I don't think he's going to make it to Teddy Bridgewater's bye week. I think the switch is already going to happen. So you're going to basically be looking at Tyrod Taylor just as your bench player who's a bench player in real life. So I definitely think that was a waste of a waiver pick. But, again, we don't know what's going to happen. It's been a weird season. It's been a, you know, for all these rookies, they don't really have preseason to showcase what they got, limited practices with this COVID shit. So we shall see. Maybe Tyrod does take it to the full season. We don't know. But, again, I'm not mad at your QB situation your QB situation is looked at 20 to 25 points a week and you can't be mad at that with that expectations with this tier three to tier four you know QBs now let's jump down to your running backs David Johnson a lot of people have a lot of things to say about David Johnson maybe he'll have a bounce back here he's definitely on that bubble between you know a bounce back player and wash but New situation, a new area, you know, maybe Houston will utilize him, you know, something that Kingsbury in Arizona couldn't do. Maybe, you know, him and Watson has a beautiful connection. So David Johnson has a question mark next to him. So I'm not mad that you got David Johnson to be the duel that you got with Josh Jacobs. Now, Josh Jacobs, he's in a better situation. He's going to be giving you PPR value, being that he's now the bell cow. They understand and realize the vision that he can catch passes at the backfield and also be the every down back. So I do like, like Josh Jacobs on your roster. Now, if we jump down to the depth at your running back situation, this is where I have a problem with your roster. Carlos Hyde is in a running back committee, you know, with Chris Carson. There could be a one-two punch going on where they both could be relevant. Carlos Hyde coming off a thousand yards season with Houston that really don't make their focal point to be the, you know, run first offense. Now he's in a run first offense where Carlos Hyde could be utilized and he can be correctly used to basically be the guy there. So Chris Carson is hurt all the time. He has fumble and issues, et cetera. So that kind of worries me with Chris Carson owners. But again, Carlos Hyde's splitting carries right here. So I'm not too mad at that situation. But when it comes to week to week, he's not going to be a guy that can fill in and put up the same amount of points as a Josh Jacob or even, you know, a quarter of what he could put up week to week. So Sony Michelle, another guy that can be game scripted out, you know, week to week. He also coming off a knee surgery. So it's like it's not looking too good for Sony Michelle to be the guy, you know, over there in New England with James White, Rex Burkhead and Damian Harris and a whole bunch of other running backs there that are probably going to be getting their touches as well week to week. So Sony Michelle, Carlos Hyde, they're not really good tools to go into, you know, when you have a Josh Jacobs on bye week or if they're injured, David Johnson, et cetera. These aren't guys that can come off your bench and show up and show out. So what I do recommend is for you to hit waivers or make some trades, you know, with these other players that you got that you could bring in some guys that can, you know, you know, basically pull up and show up and show out when their number is called. So let's jump to your wide receivers. Now, 
Stefan Diggs, he's in a new team, new area. A lot of people say, you know, when these stud wide receivers, they go to new teams, it's going to take a year, you know, for the learning curve, for the connection and chemistry, which I do agree with. But Stefan Diggs is a different situation. He's not a one trick pony, I think. I think he's an overall posh wide receiver where him and Josh Allen can get that chemistry going real quickly. It's not like he's a rookie or anything like that. Now, I jump down to Tyreek Hill. We know we're getting out of Tyreek Hill as long as he stays healthy. So, He's a stud wide receiver one, so I do like you got the Diggs and Stephon Diggs. I mean, Stephon Diggs and Ty, uh, Tyreek Hill combo. And C.D. Lamb, I'm not really here to talk too much of your lineup, but rookies scare me a little bit right now. Rookies are really something that I'm not starting week one, but I do like that you got C.D. Lamb. He could be a stud. He could be one of the, you know, thousand-yard receivers that the Cowboys have. So I'm not mad at him, you know being in your roster as you're starting, you know, flex position. But again, rookies, I'm kind of pumping the brakes right now because we don't know what they could do with no preseason, limited practices and all this COVID shit. So again, I do like CD Lamb on your roster. You got a nice little trio wide receiver. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. A nice little trio wide receiver thing going on there. Now look at your depth. You got plenty of guys that can show up and show out, which honestly I think DK Metcalf should be in your starting lineup. But again, I'm not here to talk about your starting lineup. I'm talking about your overall draft, your overall team. DK Metcalf is a nice little addition to your wide receiver core. Jarvis Landry also, I do fear that he's dealing with this, you know, surgery he had early in January, February. But again, even if he takes a step back in production, you're still looking at 80 receptions, 85 receptions, which is still great. And I could take that all day long with Jarvis Landry. So again, I do like your wide receiver core. You have plenty of depth there. Why not make a trade with Jarvis Landry or DK Metcalf or even CD Lamb to get one of these stud running backs in that can help your team overall be more balanced? Because it looks like you're more balanced on the wide receiver side of things and not really balanced on the side of, you know, running backs where you can get the help at. So again, you might want to make some of these trades. I see Curtis Samuel with Samuel down here as well. He's having a really bad camp. So he might end up being a bench warmer for you as well, where you might end up dropping him because week to week, we need guys who are going to come off the bench and be able to replace these bye week guys that we have in the starting lineups. And I don't think Curtis Samuel is going to be one of them, you know, even though I was high on him going, you know, back, to May, June, July, where I was like, Curtis Ham was going to be a thing, but he's been having a really bad camp. Robbie Anderson is probably one of the guys you should go get who's on waivers right now in our league. You know, replace Curtis Samuel because Curtis Samuel is having a terrible camp right now. Robbie Anderson is showing up and showing out and basically putting all his hype to bed. So moving on to your tight ends. Tight ends, I'm not mad. You actually got two potential top 10, top 12 tight ends, which isn't a bad thing. Evan Ingram, if he's healthy, him and Danny Dimes, they're going to get that chemistry going. It's a full send for Evan Ingrams to be a top 10 you know, tight end. And if he doesn't work out to be healthy throughout the whole season, you got Greg Olson, who thinks he still has something in the tank. What makes me sleep better at night is that his quarterback is Russell Wilson. I know we all remember where Russell Wilson and Jimmy Graham had their connection, where we saw a hell of a lot of touchdowns out of Jimmy Graham. So I do think Greg Olson can get that going. He's a veteran. He's a very seasoned tight end. So it's not like he's going in, you know, wet behind the ears and don't know what's going on. So Russell Wilson and Greg Olson should be something to watch, you know, week to week. I think it's going to be a beautiful thing. But again, if ever Ingram happens to go down with in injury, you got Greg Olson sitting there in the chamber. So I definitely do like that you basically – doubled up and doubled down on guys who are going to basically be a top 12, top 10 tight end. So you did really well there. So overall, I think you have potential to be a playoff team. You could be a contender, but you need to make some of these moves to help your running back room. Your running back, you know, your roster overall is okay. You know what I mean? If I had a graded one out of 10, I'm giving you 6.7, 6.8, because you're not really there with the running backs. You don't really have a clear studded running back roster where you have running back one, two, three, and four, where these guys can switch between the flex and RB1 and RB2 uh, spots. You know what I mean? So when these bye weeks kick in, you're going to be struggling at running back. So you got to make these moves now before, you know, everything goes crazy and overreaction of all these other guys that are on waivers that are, are popping off on these guys' benches. Make some trades now so where you can actually help your running back. So again, that's all I got for you. Desmond, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully you make these moves. Hopefully you take some of the things I said in consideration. Make some moves at running back so you could be a playoff team, could possibly secure that sixth seed, maybe fifth seed area if you secure another running back that can help you week to week. So that was a great episode of Real Deal Fantasy HQ. And make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Real Deal Fantasy HQ, of course. And I'll see you guys next week for another great episode of Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ. Peace.